Hey everybody, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. This video is going to be about forming a concrete pool deck. And it's going to be a two part series. So you'll be able to see how I form, pour, and finish a concrete pool deck like this. The second part will be about us pouring and finishing the pool deck. This one's going to be about the forming. I didn't want to make the video too long, so that's why I'm breaking it into two videos. So if you guys don't know me, if you're new here, if this is the first time you're watching my channel, my name's Mike Day. My channel's all about concrete, finishing concrete, pouring concrete, stamping concrete, everything to do with concrete. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. I come out with a couple videos a week, teaching you guys, trying to help you guys learn how to pour and finish concrete. So what we call this kind of pool in Maine is this is a kidney shaped pool. So there's not really any straight edges to this pool. And, and we do a lot of these types of jobs in Maine. Uh, you know, people install a lot of pools in Maine, even though there's probably only about three months out of the year that, that we use them. But you'd be surprised, there's a lot of people that install pool decks in Maine. So, and you know, for this kind of work for us, concrete pool decks is, is a big part of our business. And there's not a lot of people that do them. So, we're, uh, we're one of the ones that specialize in them around Central Maine, and I get a lot of calls to do these, so I kind of get to pick and choose the ones I like to do. Now, this one was kind of unique in a way that the homeowner, the homeowner had a couple things going on here. First of all, he's got a couple of those retaining walls, block retaining walls. You can see the one on the left and then one here towards the front of the screen. And the homeowner wanted the pool deck to be about a foot away from those retaining walls so when we slope the concrete pool deck away from the pool any rainwater will have a place to to drain off the pool deck he'll put crushed rock in there in that little one foot area and he's also got drainage tile in there so that'll be how he's going to get rid of the water you know headed towards the the retaining walls there <clears throat> and his house is right there to the left too you can't quite see it but to the left of the video and the left hand side of the video his house is right there so any water that kind of gets onto the pool deck and drains off it running towards his house will go into that crushed rock and into his drainage. Now, I'm, what I'm doing right now is I'm screwing together some PVC forms and we're going to make kind of two sides of this pool deck curved and those other two sides that go up against the retaining wall are going to be straight. Now, normally on a pool deck like this, we'll kind of follow the shape of the pool depending on how wide we make the pool deck sometimes we make them four feet wide sometimes six sometimes eight but because of the the way the homeowner had these retaining walls in here he wanted to get as much pool deck as much square footage as he could out of this area this size out behind his house so that's why this one's a little bit of odd shaped so what we're doing is we're getting all the forms laid out I, I'm getting them screwed together and the two straight sides were, were pretty easy to do you know we're just measuring a foot off those retaining walls and we're pinning them in place running some strings and pinning them in place and now the curved side over here is what we're doing they wanted about four feet of concrete deck on that side of the pool so we're gonna cut a, a stick four feet and we'll hold it up against the coping this pool also had the copen already installed. The Whoever installed the pool put that PVC copen right there too. A lot of times we'll have to form up that copen on the inside of the pool and, and pour that coping with the pool deck. But this one already had the copen, so that made it a little bit easier to, to get ready. So now what we're doing is we're going around and we're making sure that that PVC form is the same shape the same curve as the pool by using that four foot stick I cut and we're going around and pinning it about every four or five feet to keep that curve consistent and what we're going to do is I'll drop that form about an inch lower than the, the coping there on the pool so the concrete slopes away from the pool I'm using those 16 foot long one by four PVC forms. They're actually trim that you can use around a house. And we like those. They're pretty rigid, but they also curve really nice. They're, they're kind of expensive to, 
to buy, but we use them over and over again. I'll use, I'll have those things for, I don't know, two or three years probably before I have to replace them. So, you know, if you look at it that way, they're really not that expensive and they're fast for forming curves. So they save you a lot of time and labor. And we're just using some, I'm using some drywall screws actually to, to get them screwed together. That way the short drywall screws, that way the screws don't stick through the form into the concrete. So as you can see, I got my daughter. My daughter's right there in the white shirt, Tia, and then her friend Abby is the one in the black shirt. They're both in college. This is one of their first jobs of the summer. So they're kind of learning here as we go. And I'm here forming this up. For, for those of you guys who have watched a lot of my other videos, you know, you don't see Darren and Luke here. I got a couple other guys. If they're not here with me, that means we poured something already this morning, a floor, a slab, something, and th those guys are finishing that job while I come over here and get this ready. So I'll get this prepped today. I'll get it all formed, and then usually we'll pour it the next day. So I'm getting it ready for a pour for tomorrow. And this is just part of the process. You know, usually we'll go pour something in the morning, and then I'll go get something ready for the next day. And that's usually the way we do things. I, uh, you know, with a small crew like this, with two two guys that are finishers plus myself, we'll either pour a couple jobs a day and finish them, or we'll pour one and then get one ready for the next day, like this. This is about an 850 square foot pool deck too, so it's it's a pretty good sized pool deck. I mean, most I think most of the pool decks that we do are between 600 and 1,000 square feet around here. So usually they're, you know, like four to six feet wide, like I said, around the pool. Sometimes some people like to go a lot bigger just to make sure they have room to put their patio chairs, their tables, their grill, gas grills or whatever. And that was kind of what this guy was thinking. He wanted a couple sides where he's got quite a bit of room, you know, to put some patio furniture and a grill. And then the other two sides are basically just for walking around the pool. You can see I'm putting a 2x4 backer up against that PVC on that straight part there. It just The backer with the 2x4 helps keep the, that 1x4 PVC piece straight. It does tend to want to curve in and out a little bit when you pour concrete up against it. So, you know, that piece wants to be nice and straight. And I like keeping things straight. If they're supposed to be straight, then that's what I want them. I want them straight. I'm using those metal pins with the holes in it to to pin the forms and then screw them to grade. And then I got my I'll set my laser up here in a minute. We'll shoot some some grades to make sure that all the forms pitch the right way and slope the right way. But this is basically you know what we do for for work on an everyday basis. We're we're either pouring floors, we're pouring slabs forming things up, doing a pool deck, doing a walkway, doing a patio. And that's what I like teaching you guys. You know, if you guys want to learn more about this stuff, like I said, on some of my other videos I've talked about, I'm coming out with a course about how to start your own business. So, and I'm working on that now. So make sure you guys let me know if that's something you're interested in. I want, I want to, I'll keep track of you guys that said yes, so I can reach out to you when I get that done. And you know, I started this business, I was about 19 years old, between 19 and 20 years old when I started, and I'm 55 now, so it's been, I've been doing it a long, long time, but I didn't know what I was doing when I first started, so I want to help you guys, you know, minimize the mistakes, uh, speed up the learning curve, and if you want to start your own business, then that's what I'm here to do, I'm here to help you do that in any way I can. So this is the next morning, and we're finishing up the prep work now. And, and what we do to finish up is I'm, I'm over there on the right, and I'm putting duct tape around that coping, and we do that to keep it clean. That coping, has, it's, a, it's a, like a PVC coping, and it's got like an orange peel finish on it. And we're going to wheelbarrow this pool deck. It's not big enough to pump for us, and we can't quite reach it without the concrete truck, so we'll just wheelbarrow part of it. And when you wheelbarrow stuff, it does splatter when you dump the wheelbarrow. So we want to make sure that coping stays nice and clean. We'll pull that duct tape 
when we finish the concrete, we don't let it sit there overnight. Otherwise, sometimes the glue will stick to that coping. So it's basically just there for when we pour. What Darren's doing over there is he's setting the ladder. I like setting the ladder in the railings in these pools myself. That way I know that they're perfect and they're right in the right spot. And those, those ladders and copings, they have sleeves where the ladder slides down into the sleeves that go into the concrete. So if you don't get those sleeves in right, then you've got, I mean, that ladder's not going to slide down in there. And it's got to be able to slide down in and you got to be able to take it out in the winter. So when they cover the pool, you know, the, the ladder and the railing aren't in the way. So what we do is we slide, we put the sleeves right on and we, we bolt them in place. And then we, as you can see there, we put the ladder right in place, right where we want it, right where it's supposed to go. It's supposed to go so far away from the pool so far out from the pool and, and obviously they got to be so far apart from each other those two sleeves so by installing the, the uh, ladder right in the concrete as we're pouring this guarantees it's in the right spot so I take the responsibility for doing that and it's really not that bad it's pretty easy to do once you've done it so we'll get the ladder in place We'll make sure we're real careful when we pour around it. And now what we're doing is we're getting ready to put the railing. The railing's a little more trickier because um, the ladder kind of butts up against the pool down there in the water. So it kind of almost holds itself in place, but the railing doesn't. So we gotta, we got to make sure the railing has something to, to sit on. So we're going to put a form across those stairs. Those are actually stairs right there in front of Darren and Luke that you walk down into the pool in. And you can see that's it for the railing and it's not going to hold itself in place so we're going to put some forms up to help balance the the railing and then on those forms we'll we'll put a couple screws on each side and run a string to kind of plumb that railing and make sure that it's nice and plumb and straight as we pour around it so we do, i mean we do this on all the pools we do so for us it's just a normal part of what we do and there's also you can't see it in the video right here there's also a ground wire that goes around this pool so we'll we'll tie that ground wire to the to the ladder to the railing and also to the wire mesh we got put in there so the whole pool deck's grounded in case i don't know it's just code so in case lightning hits it i guess it's everything's grounded so we got the straight edge there we're running from the top of the form to the top of the pool coping so now we know the height of the concrete and we're going to set those those couplings that the railing slides into right to the height of the concrete we don't want them sticking up higher and we don't want them down lower so those are going to be at the right height and then they also going to be at the right distance apart you can see they're about eight inches one's in, one's in front of the other and they also got to be a certain distance away from the pool you know they're going to be about eight or ten inches away from the pool those couplings so that's what we're doing this is the process that we do it and this is how we form you know our pool decks whether they're curved whether they have both curves both straight edges like this one does this one's a little bit unique in that way or whether they're just a, a rectangular pool and they just all have straight edges with just the four corners have little curves in them so let me know how many of you guys out there do pool decks you know how many of you pour pool decks how many do you form them and what do you call pool decks like this where you're from? We call them kidney-shaped pools. You know, do you guys call them something different? This is an in-ground pool. It's a vinyl pool. A lot of pools in Maine are these vinyl-type pools like this. Um, let me know what you guys have for pools in your areas, you know, in different parts of the country. Do you have a different type of pool that you use? Do you have to form the inside copings of the pool also? How many of you guys do that? Part two of the video will be coming out next, so you'll get to see how we pour and finish around a pool like this. And thanks for watching, guys.